Brothers and a bro fist to you all for Friday has dawned on us so fast this week. It has been unbelievable how quickly this week has flown by. But what an exciting week it has been. Project MMO in Guild Wars 2 finally reached the raids. Oh, yes. It finally got there and we stepped foot. We got as blind as we could possibly be and stepped into the raids for the very first time. And what a surprise it was. What an absolute surprise. Can't wait to do a more in-depth discussion on it, but it was absolutely fantastic. A lot of their bosses, even from eight years ago, could pass for modern day bosses. They actually did a stellar job on a couple of them. One of them I really disliked. But other than that, it was pretty fantastic. And Wing 2 will be taking place on Monday. We also stepped into The Last of Us, which was fantastic. We're going to be finishing that. I have not... I, I We're up to the bit I stopped playing back in 2013. So we've got past that. And that means eventually I can watch the rest of the show. Which will be wonderful to be able to see that. That will be great. Yes, we still have Destiny 2. We have Crisis Core on the menu as well. And we watched the live letter for Final Fantasy XIV today. Which was exceptional as the Criterion Dungeons and the Rats will finally be put to rest. As there will be something new for everybody to latch onto. We also played the Resident Evil 4. Yes, gifted to us. It was fantastic. We got early access to Resident Evil 4, and we got a brand new GPU, courtesy of AMD, where we did a wonderful uh, Last of Us, Five Nights at Freddy's IRL thing uh, that the chat got very into, swapping cameras as we had a professional horror makeup artist come into the house and put mushrooms and shit all over Emma's face. It was absolutely amazing. It was super fun. Now, all that was just in the last, like, five days. <laughs> all that stuff was just in the last five days. Oh, man. <laughs> it has been a busy one. It has been a hell of a week, but super fun, as always. But that's not why you're here right now, is it? No, because across the world, you guys send us tales of misery, woe, fun, excitement, happiness, joy, and all the pain that comes from playing online games. And we also had the PoE reveal last night as well. Yes, we've got PoE coming back uh, very soon. That was, we also did PoE. I can't even remember half the stuff we did this week. I feel like we did a month's worth of stuff this week absolutely insane how much stuff we did so we have drama time and what happens is people send us their stories of their online shenanigans and uh we either take a lesson away from it or we uh, kind of laugh at the horror <laughs> that comes with it um and you can send them to drama at preachgaming.com uh to uh, get your tale in and if you're one of our website supporters, your name will feature in Drama Time and you you will replace some of the either lovely or horrible characters that appear in Drama Time. That's really down to Bex as to which character you will be. <laughs> it's nothing to do with me anymore. Uh, so this story... Oh, has several people in it. Let's kick off with this. Uh, mine Croco will be here. Mr. Elby. Wonderful LB, a featured uh, resident at the recent CrawlerCon that took place in the Netherlands. Fallible Fox. Some wonderful names here. Braga is in this one. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. And, oh, God. We've got a fine collection of sirs. And Woden. Um, okay. <laughs> We've got a fine collection of sirs that are in here. <laughs> a fine collection of sirs. Braggart will carry. Uh-huh. We'll we shall see. <clears throat> we shall see. We shall see what happens here. We shall see. <laughs> Woden can only be a good guy. I don't know. He's Australian. We'll see. <laughs> All right, then. Let's jump into a house divided. <sighs> Hello, Preacher and the wonderful chat. I am currently sat in a boring corporate meeting on Zoom... So in the spirit of listening, I'm writing you this story. Genius. Genius. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I imagine on camera, you looked like you were paying so much attention. You really did. On camera, it looked like you were like fully invested. You were writing so many notes. Like, wow, what a dude. He's really giving it everything. He's really so into these Zoom meetings. <laughs> I wrote you a tale a very long time ago about the end of high school experience being a complete piece of human garbage. After playing Ragnarok online, how the entrance into the MMO genre turned a fairly normal, young, budding adult into a total shithead. <laughs> yeah, MMOs can do that. The story was called New Kit from Orbit. Upon re-listening, no regrets. Not a one, even after your judgments. Hmm. Well, Preach, I am here with you. I do not remember this one. I don't remember that at all. 
I'm here with another tale. This one has a bit more IRL in it. But of course, it's all about that gaming and the degeneracy it causes. I wish you all listening right now to cast your way back to the mid-2000s. <sighs> Year 2000, the millennium, was 23 years ago when the world was coming to an end. And we were all going to have our computers broken. That was 23 years ago. <laughs> Do you remember? <laughs> Do you remember when the world was coming to an end? It was all falling apart. Y2K, it was all falling apart. Oh, you're not born yet? Let me tell you. This is Boomer Tale. Listen to your dad. Sit down. Let me li listen to your dad. In 1999, for the entire year, we were all bombarded with the knowledge that all the computers in the world were going to break. Every single one. And the reason was because none of the programming for any computers took into account the year changing from one to two. And we were all kind of rest assured that as soon as the clock struck midnight and the, the, year, the year changed, that we were all going to fall apart. And while this was happening, all the computer guys were like, that is just not going to happen. <laughs> it's totally fine. <laughs> it's totally fine. But it didn't stop a whole swathe of companies being set up and making billions, billions of dollars checking your software to make sure it was y2k compatible and all these companies paid these other companies to come in and check their software to make sure that it was y2k compatible and that everything would work it was unbelievable it was a year of fear thankfully we're over that now and we're not bombarded by the media with constant fear anymore and we all live in such a pleasant time so we can all be thankful for that we can all be thankful that we're not constantly being put in fear of the end of the world anymore. Uh, now we all celebrate our post Y2K lifestyle. <laughs> you remember that ridiculousness? It was crazy. It was absolutely crazy because all all like common sense was like, why wouldn't it just go to two? Why, why would that work? They came up with some crazy rationalization for Y2K. Okay. I have been in university, I had been, so mid-2000s, I had been in university for a few years at this point, and after some time in the dorms, decided it was time to move off campus. It was time to set out away from that final safety net and become an own, I could become my own man. Okay. Dorm rooms are disgusting. Don't recommend it for longer than one year. Dorm rooms are gross. Absolutely gross. And people are shit. That is, uh, that is a true. There's always somebody in your do in your dorms that sucks. And is just gross and disgusting. Not the least of which, the prior year, my best friend Fallible Fox and I had drank and partied our way to the most single year non-expulsion worthy write-up total in dorm history. We're always proud of our records. Okay. So Fallible Fox and I decided to get a home together. We roped in my former dorm mate, Elby, who I had known for several years, and his new friend, Mine Croco. Okay, we're creating a bed sit is what's happening. Four of us sharing one kitchen. All right. That made four. We could start looking for a house that was on the larger size with what the extra split in rent. However, Mine Croco had a request. He said his old friend Braggart, who I was reasonably acquainted with, wanted to stay with us too so i didn't really have an issue with this braggart was a weird one sometimes but overall pretty friendly and best of all braggart played video games though he was one of those people who liked fps games he seemed to love war not like fun fantasy war, but real war. Every time we would play an RTS game, he would point out how it was for pussies. And we should all be playing Command and Conquer instead. <clears throat> but he kind of liked the older Warcraft ones. They seemed okay. The RTS, not the MMO. Mentioning the game always mentioning MMOs always made him very quick to change the subject. Okay. Now, yeah, I mean, Red Alert 2 is renowned for its military accuracy. Tim Curry 
is exactly how all generals behave. That's it's it's hard to say. It's 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 hard to deny. Now, preacher, I firmly believe that gaming can be a beautiful hobby. It can bring us all together as it did during the pandemic. But like all things, it can be made a little too important in our own minds if we let things go too far. Thankfully for us, we found a five-bedroomed house in the area. Not a great neighborhood, to be sure, but the price was within reason, and this house was huge. While Fallible Fox and I planned out future poker nights, Braggart and mine Croco were tasked with planning out the LAN parties, and so our gaming adventure together would begin. The first LAN party they threw was fine. It was amazing. We had some friends over, they brought their PCs, set up some tables, and we all played Counter-Strike. I am dog at FPS games. Straight up dog shit. That said, something odd happened that evening. Something unusual. For whatever reason, Aaron Jesus smiled upon me. And I became the Punisher himself. I was slotting headshots that I could never hope to do on a regular basis. I was the number one killer on my team. I was carrying them. It had never happened before in my entire time of playing video games. And it has never happened since in an FPS. I was also like pretty drunk while doing so. At the end of the evening, I was ready to stumble my way to bed. When Braggart was waiting for me in the corridor. I thought you said... You sucked at FPS games. He said in a voice that I could tell was generally, genuinely upset with me. I was drunk. So I replied to drop Braggart. I thought you were good and not a little bitch though. As I walked into my room to retire for the evening. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Do me though. You know what's coming. Do me though. Do me, do me now. No, no, you're not going to bed. Do me though. Do me now. Pistols, snipers, name it, name the map. Do me though. Now look, I'd been drinking, but I thought in my mind that the tone of my voice came across in a jokey way. A little ironic, a bit playful. Nothing anybody would ever take seriously. And I swear to God, I think I formed a serial killer that day. I think I broke him completely. The next morning, I, in my true student lifestyle, awoke at the crack of 11 a.m. <laughs> I was ready to make my way to the kitchen and make a coffee. Braggart's room is across the hall from mine. His door was partially open, so I thought I'd offer to make him a coffee too. And explain that what I said the night before may have come out wrong, but I was drunk. I hadn't really meant to take a dig at his FPS skills or anything like that. As I opened the door, there Braggart sat in the dark. During the night, oh no. Braggart had decided to duct tape cardboard over his windows. He said the light was bothering him. He had been up all night practicing Counter-Strike. In the dark, perched on his chair like some sort of energy drink fueled gargoyle. He did not reply to my coffee request. Oh dear. <laughs> Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> he's become a sweat. It's happened. The next step is he's going to tell you about these awesome incel threads on Reddit that he, that he totally agrees with. They've given him a whole new perspective on life. He's been looking at things all wrong, but now he's found some fellow people that uh, have shown him the ways. And uh, let, him, let him spread the good word. Let him spread the good word. I didn't say anything grown ass adult he can do whatever the hell he wants i moved out and figured i'd probably pissed him off last night 
maybe I should just leave him alone for a couple of days and maybe even try and apologize if he was still in a bit of a huff. It was a stupid line, came off all wrong, and thinking about it, it wasn't particularly funny either. Oh, I don't know, I think it's pretty funny. <laughs> but days came and went. Oh no, oh no, where does this go? We hadn't seen Braga outside of his room a single time. I started to ask the fellow roomies. They hadn't seen him either. Except for Mine Croco. You see, Mine Croco had a decent gaming laptop, and despite going to class, he had a far more difficult major than the rest of us, he was playing Counter Strike with Braga during class. As he told it, Braga was looking for people to work on his game see where he could improve someone to coach him and spot flaws in his gameplay things like that <laughs> so my croco who was his longtime rl friend said he would help coach him in counter strike <laughs> okay oh no <laughs> this is so bad i felt really awful had one stupid comment really screwed up someone's head so badly? This can't stand. He's been in that room forever. So, I went over to Braggart's door. He answered. And in a fairly lively voice said, Hey man. Walked past me into the kitchen and started making himself a bowl of cereal. Now, what was weird about this is he was only wearing a blanket. And I mean only wearing a blanket. My Croco had just gone home from class and was arguing with Braggart for some time about putting on some clothes. Just some. As the two were old friends, I gathered by the tone of the conversation that this was not my Croco's First experience with Braggart going full degenerate into gaming for some time. But it was being dealt with, and I wasn't the one dealing with it, and that's a thumbs up in my book. Fair enough. But it got worse. Weeks went by. Weeks. And Braggart kept the same thing going. He was awake almost all the time in his completely blacked out room playing counter-strike by this point he had decided to add two miniature speakers into the back of his chair next to his ears to improve his performance uh, <laughs> uh, it's gonna be okay we're just gonna get him a bath we're going to get him some sunlight. It's going to be fine, guys. Braggart is going to be fine. <clears throat> Another LAN party was scheduled for around this time. And it so happened we were going to be playing Warcraft 3. A game that I'm pretty good at, honestly. And for this party, we had a few extra people join us who hadn't been present at the, the last party. Including a woman named Woden. Oh, no. No, don't bring a girl into this experience. No, man. No, no, don't do that. This is this is risky. This is risky. This is going to end so badly. No. So we've got five sweats and a woman. That is a brave woman. Respect. Big respect. I'm not going near it. <laughs> Even I'm not going to this party. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm not going. <laughs> uh, Woden was a pretty good friend of Elby's. And apparently, I had met her in my teen years. When we all went to high school together. Truth be told, I don't remember her. But, and of course you're wondering, yes, Woden was very attractive. Okay. <laughs> He's not going to come out with just his blanket on. So your name's Woden, eh? I've got speakers in me chair. Do you want to see them? It's very immersive. 
you can hear footsteps all around you. Oh, it's good. It's very, very good. At this LAN party, Woe did ended up being extremely good at Warcraft 3. She played Night Elves, of course, <laughs> but was an extremely efficient creep farmer. Braggart was impressed. Oh, he's there. He's joined. However... We should note that as it had been some time since Braggart delved into his degenerate spiral, in all those weeks, he had not showered a single time. And he was still just wearing the same blanket and nothing else. Why is no one, like, kicking him out of the room, though, right? Like, I, that is just unacceptable. I'm actually angry. I, I, I would like to, like somewhat smile at this but if someone if i went to a place and someone came out in just a blanket naked and stinking to high heaven i'm either gonna leave or i'm gonna say what is going on with this dude and why is he here because that's not happening i'm leaving <clears throat> i'm straight leaving because you that's disgusting the man stank the whole room out and we were all quite sick of occasionally seeing his balls when he rearranged his blanket. <sighs> just leave, right? Let's just go out. As you can probably imagine, Braggart had taken a shine to Woden. In his words... It's good to see an attractive female gamer. Just the worst, man. Just the worst. Just the worst. It's like every nightmare coming true. It's awful. <laughs> we have words from our author here. Now, chat, I know where you think this is going. Do we... Because it's already gone in a different direction than I think it should go. He says, hold, chat, hold. I can't believe anybody's still in this room. Like, he would be evicted by now if this guy was living with me. And I'd say, sort your shit out or you're out of the house. After the LAN party, which Woden very much enjoyed, she started spending more time at the house. What are you people? <laughs> Even as a student, I was not... <sighs> It was actually Braggart who kept asking her to come around. But not to try and date her. He wanted her to sh coach him in RTS games. Oh my god, what a geek. <laughs> what a geek. <laughs> he wanted to know what he was doing wrong, how he could improve. Why wasn't he leveling his heroes as quickly as she did? Why was his resource lines lagging behind hers? I have no idea how it happened. But it was noticeable, Preach. And I swear to you, Woden quite liked Braggart as well. She can fix him. She can fix him. It's good. She can fix him. It's all good, man. She can fix him. It's fine. <laughs> she can fix him. I don't know, man. It happens. It happens. Maybe it was that musk. Oh, dude. <laughs> Maybe it was the sight of his flailing twig and berries. Who the hell knows? Oh, was he packing Chong? Hence the blanket. She was at our house more and more, which was fine. She wasn't a bother. In fact, she would occasionally play poker with Fox, myself, and our other group of friends. She always joined in. Oh, she needs to start paying some rent. Until one night. Okay, here it goes. Until one night, I came home with Fox. We'd been out drinking at an open mic night, and lo and behold, Braggart was still in his blanket. He was passing by the kitchen, grabbing some cereal, which, as far as I know, is all he had eaten in a total of two months. I was going back to his room. He didn't say a word. He didn't look in my direction or seem much more loosely aware than the material plane of existence. That was a man on a mission. He needed to get back to gaming with his cereal. And then I noticed it. Woden's coat was hanging off the door. 
Well played, Braga. How bad must that dick have smelled? That's all I can think. That's all I can think is how bad must that dick have smelled? Sweet Jesus. God damn. Gross. Just gross. That's all I'm picturing here. I headed for my room. At this point, I'm quite tired. It was probably around three in the morning. I opened my door and noticed someone was in my bed. It was Woden. Oh, he didn't get in your bed. Ew. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh, bad touch. Bad touch. Burn the sheets. Burn them all. Oh, that's rank. Oh, I feel gross. Oh, I need a bath. Oh. I paused, left my room and went to Braggart. Why is Woden in my bed? Braggart did reply with a mumbly tone. I have no idea what he said. I didn't care to stick around. His room smelled like actual death. And the glare of the monitor being the only source of light in the entire room was insane. So I went back to my room to try and wake Woden up. LB had some out of time friends over. And all the couches were taken up. I had a big bed, a queen size at the time. And really didn't mind sharing. <laughs> nice. <laughs> hey, you know... Dude's got to do what a dude's got to do. You know? <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> she started to stir a little as I came around to the other side of my bed to get a bottle of water before crashing. I knocked into my mini fridge and something fell off. Fell on the floor and made a clanking sound. It was a bottle of whiskey. My whiskey and it was empty. <gasps> Son of a bitch. She went into your room, drank your alcohol as a student? That is a criminal offense. Stealing alcohol at a student is not cool. You do not do that. You do not go into a roomie's room and take their alcohol. That is a fucking party foul. That is a serious party foul. You don't do that. Rest assured, that bottle was not empty earlier that evening. Woden had drank the whole fucking thing. And in her words, I had to. I wanted to have sex with Braga, but he smelt so bad I needed the whiskey. This is possibly the most unattractive woman in existence. <laughs> the most unattractive woman and the most unattractive man coming together like two atoms smashing together. <laughs> it was at this point I decided I was just going to go to sleep sitting in the living room chair. I assume she took my bed to avoid sleeping in Braggart's death hole, which, as irritating as it was, I did understand that move. That said, that said, there is no fucking way that I am sleeping next to a drunk girl that's had Braggart's body near her. <laughs> God damn. It was a lot of whiskey. For her sake of mine, the chair would do for this solitary night. Yeah, they totally used his bread. Ah. <sighs> A couple of days later, Braggart dumped Woden because he said she had taught him all she knew. Wow. 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 My God. My God. Why she stuck around after this, I cannot explain. But Braggart went on to explain that, honestly, she just started getting in the way of my ladder time. Mother of Christ, this household. Mother of Christ. Now, I'm not sure for which game at this point he was referring to, but I have no doubt it was a game. Either that or he and his twig and berries have been scrambling up ladders with none of us were looking. And we hadn't noticed that or heard distressed screams from our neighbors indicating that he'd been climbing ladders either. This carried on for months. Braggart did not bathe. He only ate cereal, rotated through games, and kept full degen hours. It was almost spring at this time, and as Braggart's degeneracy continued, there was mutiny in the house brewing. It took months for this. This is like... It's not fake. Like, the story... This is why you have to get out of halls. We call them halls over here. You have to. They're the worst. You get paired with people, and you just don't understand how they live their life the way they do. 
You really don't. If you've ever been to student halls, you meet people and you're like, how do you exist? You are so disgusting. How is it possible that you exist and made it to university? It's unreal. I hated it. I stayed in halls for less than two months before I got an apartment with my best friend. I was like, I can't deal with this. It's it's gross. It's disgusting. I've told that story many times. When I visited Emma's, Emma stayed in halls in Liverpool for ages with eight other girls. And literally while we were sat eating breakfast and I was in the, the shared kitchen, this girl just come in in a nightie, sat on the windowsill with her full fucking ham wallet hanging out. Just talking to us as casual as light. And I said, I can, you know, your legs are open. And she went, oh, it's all right. I live here. And it's just not all right. It's not. It's just not all right. It's, <laughs> it's not. It's really not okay. <laughs> it's just don't do it. Because she was from Yorkshire. I think she was from Leeds. Yeah, I think she was from Leeds. And, and Emma was just like, she, they, these girls are like this all the time. She said the, the girls were way more gross than the boys. You loved it? I did not. I did not. <laughs> I did not. There's a time and a place. There's a time and a place. That was not the time and it was not the place. My Croco. <clears throat> my Croco and I had begun playing World of Warcraft together. Which also meant that what gaming time my Croco had, he was spending on WoW with me and was no longer gaming with Braggart. This was probably the third or fourth time starting, quitting, restarting World of Warcraft. Today I'm up to roughly, roughly 20 rage quit and return cycles with the game. Which is still, in some people's eyes, rookie numbers. <laughs> As a month or two of leveling and PvPing with my Croco and WoW had gone by, I hadn't paid much heed to Braggart. He had kind of turned into one of those pirates from the Pirate Caribbean movies, where they kind of mix with the walls. That's disgusting. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> like peeling out of the walls. <laughs> Oh, that is rank. <laughs> that is disgusting. Part of the ship. <laughs> part of the ship. Part of the crew. He'd almost started going out of his way to avoid people. And on the rare occasion I did run into him outside of his lair, he would sort of stay away from me. Part of the ladder. Part of the ship. <laughs> World of Warcraft, and more specifically, simply playing an MMO, had yet again been a key piece of drama. I'd have plenty more of these over the years that followed, but those are stories for another st another time. I can tell you for a teaser, a time I accidentally joined and stayed with, unknowingly, a raiding guild for an entire year that contained actual KKK members, and I didn't realize it. I'm not even joking. Perhaps I'm too forgiving. You are. This braggart, braggart should be, like, evicted within, like, a month. Like, I'm not living with somebody like this. This is not happening. You are. At the end of March... Something happened that we hadn't ever had to do. The bell was rung. The sirens were called. We were to have our first ever house meeting. It had been called by LB and my Croco. Oh, very official. We're having a house meeting, everybody. House meeting. House meeting. I was a little intimidated. A house meeting? We don't do this. There really hadn't been much drama before outside of us possibly owning a literal gremlin in Braga. But we all sat together at the table. I decided to sit as far away from Braga and his stench as possible. Braga attended the meeting wearing his classic blanket, which had now changed colours from when I first remembered seeing it. That's... We can imagine he's not washing the blanket. I think it's fair to say if somebody's not bathing or showering, they're probably not watch washing the blanket. It began with mine, Croco and Elby talking of how... <laughs> <laughs> they're treating it like one of those most frustrating guild meetings in the world. Oh my god. They started by saying that someone in the house, not mentioning any names, had been showing no respect to the balance of order within the house. Now, we're not going to mention any names, but someone is <laughs> someone here is not playing by the rules. 
and that it was time for someone in the house to start looking for a new home. My immediate thought, of course, was mine, Croco, and Elby had had enough of the stench gremlin that had become Braggart. Which is all, which, as the guy who lived across the hall from him, I was very happy to support. But it wasn't. It was Fallible Fox. It was Fallible Fox, who was and still to this day is my closest friend. They explained their problems. One, Fallible Fox's was too messy in, uh, regarding the state of his bedroom. Two, he was making too much noise at night, especially the music from his computer. Three, oh, okay, we found the real problem, actually. Yeah, the, the first two are bullshit. First two no one cares about. It's number three. His girlfriend was a bitch. <laughs> And she had started staying over a few nights a week. And she was getting on everyone's tits. <laughs> That's the problem. Your girlfriend's a bitch. You've got to go. <laughs> that, that makes way more sense. I wish it didn't, but that makes way more sense. Nobody likes your girlfriend. You've got to move out, man. <clears throat> That's it. I'm not dealing with it. She's annoying. I don't like it. I wish I had a picture or video of this specific moment in my life. I have no doubt my jaw would look as though it was dislocated with my eyes flashing red in anger. I had two thoughts to this. One, everything laid on Fox was, in fact, exactly what Braggart had been doing. How in the actual titty fucking Christ was Fallible Fox taking the heat for this? Braggart had literally been walking around with only a crusty stinking blanket and had a room you would need to be vaccinated for if you went inside it. Two, his girlfriend was a bitch. <laughs> Can't deny that. <laughs> that is absolutely true. Can't deny it. She was so fucking annoying. It was the laugh. It was the laugh. Trust me. She was like Fran Drescher's laugh. It was awful. Okay. <clears throat> okay. There was so much shouting at this point and anger, and it went on and on and on. A little group of boys had begun tearing into one another, and none of it just made any sense, but it didn't need to. Every minor slight, every little thing that hadn't been a big deal prior was now a big deal. I don't even remember half the stuff being said, to be honest. I more remember it as a bunch of primates hooking ball crap at each other than grown men chatting about what's to be done. And I was as bad as the rest. Once it got started, I couldn't hold back either. In the end, Fox said he loved her and that he would move out. I said I'm moving out as well. That this argument had just gone way too far, lines had been crossed, and they had said things that can't be taken back. It is what it is. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> Years later, I found out from mine Croco that Braggart had been very unhappy that he and I had been playing WoW together, thus taking away his gaming friend. He didn't have someone to help him get better. And basically, Braggart thought of his friends more like Twitch VODs for a race to world first than an actual companion. <laughs> Fuck you guys, I'm out. Hey, your girlfriend's a bitch, the <laughs> That's the Fran Drescher laugh, isn't it? <laughs> like that. Ugh. Cringe. <clears throat> Braggart explained that he hated World of Warcraft. Loathed it, and anyone who played it was a pussy. No idea if there was a backstory there, and I have no intention of reaching out to him to find out. Braggart had actually been badmouthing Fox to mine Croco and Elby behind the man's back to make this aforementioned meeting happen. <laughs> he had been complaining that his girlfriend's laugh had been causing him deaths in Counter-Strike. <laughs> Even with his little speakers in his chair? That's outrageous. That's outrageous. All was fine until she'd been wiping him in Counter-Strike, man. <laughs> All was good until that point. And then she crossed some fucking lines. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> He knew tempers would boil over and he would be rid of Fox and also me. 
Talking to my Croco, Braga had fully admitted to this years later and found it quite entertaining to have instigated the meeting that caused our house to collapse. What a dick. Braga knew I wasn't going to let my best friend get kicked to the curb solo. There was no way. The man may be a DJ, but he clearly knew what buttons to press to turn LB and Croco against Fox. Fox was a good guy, but he did have a temper. And I'd always backed Fox and likely did so a bit too forcibly during the now infamous house meeting. You see, Fox was always the odd man out when it came to things. He didn't really like games. And apparently that actually was also an issue in the eyes of Braggart as somebody who didn't like games living in the house was untrustworthy. <laughs> you don't like games? Well, that raises some eyebrows. Okay. <clears throat> That raises a few eyebrows. Keep my eye on that kid. There are two things I want you to know about this whole experience. One, a question you are likely asking, when did Braggart go to class write exams? I was thinking about that, actually. Or work. He didn't. He had secretly dropped out of university at some point early on during this odyssey and just didn't tell anyone. I have no idea how he was paying rent, but it explains the reliance on cereal. Two, mind your words, if you think something's funny in the moment, you never know what catastrophe you may unleash and some grudges run very, very deep. They do, they do. Yeah, <laughs> it just dropped out and just didn't bother. Just stay in there. I assume it's parents' money, right? It's gotta be parents' money. Wow. I have, I am lucky. The only time I've been around unclean gamers, like the cliche on unclean gamers, uh, is Gamescom. That's the only time I've been around unclean gamers. But, uh... <clears throat> that smell is something else. I wouldn't... PreachCon does not smell bad. You're a liar. PreachCon does not have an aroma. FanFest Inc. though. FanFest will be an interesting one. I've never been to one of the magic ones. Uh, Gamescom was pretty bad. It was during an extremely hot summer. Uh, where is Gamescom again? Clone. Uh, it was an extremely hot summer, but... Damn, that place fucking stank. That place stank. It was so bad. I do not smell. How dare you? I know when I smell and I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Uh, oh, God, it's 10 to. We're going to have to turbo rush this purely because uh, Emma's waiting for me to finish. Uh... Oh, okay, we'll go with this one. Uh... It's got pictures. It's got pretty pictures. All right, we'll go with this one. I will trust our good lady Bex. Cromard and Ajna. The burgers of self-loathing. I am kind of curious what uh, anybody who listens to our previous story... Do you know... Have you been with somebody who is a true D-Gen gamer? And you're like, I just don't know how they live. I don't know how they're still alive. I don't know how it happens. I'm kind of curious for any tales <coughs> uh, that you may have. <laughs> All right. I've met you, Furion. You're not that bad, unless you scrubbed up. Unless you scrubbed up for PreachCon. <laughs> I am the DGN gamer. There's nobody sat here right now just in a blanket, right? No? We're good? We've all got clean desks? Yes? We've got nice, shiny, clean desks. We're dust-free. Perfect, yeah? We can all happily... Rub our hands across our desks with nothing on it. Yes. Well, <laughs> good. Excellent. Hey, Preacher, Drama Time audience. And if I'm listening to this, me. Hello to you. I'm a relatively new listener to of yours. Uh, about a year into my stay. And throughout that time, I've been in love with this show. The intrigue, the betrayal, the rage, the ERP. All of it so thoroughly beautiful. So I thought I'd append my little personal footnote of history to your ever-growing list of tales. I played MMOs for two in my day, mostly two. Oh, an MMO or two. Having played WoW briefly in the Burning Crusade and Wrath as a wee lad before triumphantly returning to the Mop Legion era, that lasted until my raid guild imploded, prompting a break for a new few years. I later faction swapped my way over to Final Fantasy XIV just before the Shadowbringers expansion dropped. As someone who's always enjoyed the stories of games, at least as much as the gameplay, I've been happy as a clam in Eorzea ever since. I found myself a comfy raid group and have recently finished clearing Savage Pandemonium Abyssos. Preempting the chat, yes, that raid's about five months old by the time of writing this. Stop judging us. We had fun. Fuck you and a clear's a clear. 
<laughs> oh, we've got an image. All right, glam check. Glam check. Uh, sorry, uh, audio audience. Our wonderful audio audience. But uh, I'm the guy in the back with the totally stylish cowboy hat. I mean, it looks honey yellow, so I give that approval, but I prefer Pirate Man. I certainly I certainly prefer Pirate Man. It's an acceptable glam. All right, the chat calls it an acceptable glam. Worst glam. Uh, yours does look to be the worst. <laughs> Pirate, 10 out of 10. Absolutely. A lot of bog standard ones there. <clears throat> Anyways, this story is absolutely zero relevance to anything I've mentioned up until now. So consider yourself bamboozled. This story actually begins long in the past, the prehistoric era of man, 20 or 8. I was around 10 years old. I was not currently playing WoW as my razor sharp mind had long since discovered that it was a probably shit game. <laughs> this was because it couldn't be played with a trackpad on a laptop. Yeah, all, all the games that can't be played with a trackpad on a laptop are just trash games, 100%. 10 years old, eh? Which I played on my lap while I laid in bed. As a side note, I did not discover the superiority of an external mouse or a desk until 2014. You played in bed on a bad laptop for six years. Ugh. By which point I was already around level 75. <laughs> I played computer games purely on trackpad for over seven years. And I will go to town with anybody who says I was crack crap on a trackpad. I was a wizard. You were shit. Oh, you were well shit. And we all know it. <laughs> so at the ripe old age of 10, I was without a long-term game to play. This problem did not last for long, as one time I went over to a friend's house, and he introduced me to a game that he played. It was a game that I'm very curious to know if anyone in the audience ever heard of, because I don't see a lot of talk about it these days. Or have seen a lot of talk about it ever, for that matter. It was a browser game by the name of Kingdom of Loathing. Some people may have heard of the RPG games West of Loathing and more recently Shadows Over Loathing that have achieved some success. Well, this is the game that started it all. Okay, anybody? Some people have heard it, okay. A note from Bex, I found a fan-made trailer for this game and thought it was its art was a gimmick, but nope, this is actually the art of the game. Okay. All right, a little viewing experience for us here. <laughs> Let me uh, get over here. Oh, no. Oh, no. Hey, you guys. Who? Me. Yeah, I've got a proposition for you. Uh, okay. I need you to, uh, take care of someone for me. What, <laughs> like fluff the pillow and cook for them and stuff? <sighs> take it care is stick figures. of someone. Oh. So, you support... This is the artwork of the game. It's literally Who stick it? figures. Just a little pain in my kishta, that's all. You, He's a little, witch. Uh, Average-looking one, and your little uh, whatever the hell that is. <laughs> Six unique classes, thousands of incredible monsters, countless puns. Kingdomofloathing.com. An adventure is you. An adventurer is you. Downloading it now. It's a browser game. I don't think you need to download shit. <laughs> so, uh, but WoW can't be played on a trackpad, which is the problem, right? WoW can't be played on a trackpad. Uh, for our audio listeners for the show, kingdomofloathing.com, you'll understand. Just take a look. <clears throat> oh, this is what the game looked like. Okay, we got some pictures. The typical tavern. The kingdom contains hundreds of terrifying monsters. Among them are lecherous liches, disgusting nacho golems, cunning knob goblin accountants, dangerous breakdancers, and fat loot. There's potential that this aesthetic works really well. I doubt it does, but there's really a potential that this aesthetic works super well. So, I mean, 
to give an overview of the game for the at, for the at minimum 95% of the listeners that I imagine have never heard of it before, the game is played entirely in the web browser. It is, in essence, a single-player turn-based RPG with multiplayer elements. Players create an account, choose one of six classes, and are placed in the titular Kingdom of Loathing, where everything is drawn in stick-figure style. They can then go around to different locations and engage in random events or combats in these locations. The goal in doing so is to either complete quests to progress through the game, get experience to increase your stats and level up to get certain items, or some combination of the three. Doing something in a location typically will cost one adventure, a resource that effectively time gates all the content in the game. Why are we time gating a browser game? For the most part, getting more adventures requires waiting until the next day. You can increase the number of adventures you get per day by wearing certain equipment or using certain items, but at some point you will generally have no choice but to stop playing the game. Notably, the game is entirely free to play, but there is, of course, a cash shop, and it does offer powerful items for people who shall shell out some real cash money. Pay to win. You've turned me off. I was kind of curious until it went pay to win. What a nightmare. But they're far from necessary and usually offer unique new forms of content rather than blatant power boosts. For example, access to an in-game arcade with turn-based recre recreations of classic games like Metroid. For the people who want access... Are you work for these people? For the people who want access to them without paying with the credit card and being a swipey swiper, there's also an in-game marketplace called The Mall where players can sell items for meat, which is the currency of the game. Premium items are just as sellable as regular ones, but with enough meat, you could be the proud owner of a Builder City gingerbread kit. <laughs> now, this brings me to the main draw of Kingdom of Loathing. Now we all understand the type of game. The humor. Kingdom of Loathing does not take itself seriously. And this is reflected in pretty much every aspect of its writing. The class list includes such classes as Disco Bandit, Sorcerer, as in sauce, ketchup, and Seal Clubber. Maximizing your adventures per day involves drinking yourself to and past the point of unconsciousness. The elements of the game are hot, cold, spooky, stench, and sleaze. <laughs> there is a plot-relevant location called the Misspelled Cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> cemetery where every single enemy there is an undead with a typo in its name from the humble zmobi to the dread boner dragon and so on and so forth <clears throat> oh we have an actual picture <laughs> of the elemental tree and you thought pokemon had it squared away you guys thought pokemon had it sorted you've no idea so cold is powerful against sleaze as is spooky spooky beats cold Hot beats spooky and cold. Stench beats hot. And stench beats spooky. But sleaze beats hot and sleaze beats stench. I'm not quite sure how that maths out, but I'll take your word for it. Sounds good. <clears throat> There'll be a test. There you go. There'll be a little uh, rock, paper, scissors, lizard, spark. <clears throat> so it was this game that my 10-year-old mind was turned. And oh boy, I was into it. The game was free, so I didn't have to ask my parents into paying a subscription like World of Warcraft. And it would play on a shitty trackpad laptop just as good as any of those fancy games that didn't have one. As soon as I got home from my friend's house, I slapped on an account, made myself the awesome OP Disco Bandit, because how could you not make a Disco Bandit after seeing it as an option? I then proceeded to play this game for years. years i'll gloss over this time because the details are fuzzy and not a lot happened i would play the game for a couple of months get two-thirds of the way through lose interest take a break come back later with a brand new account and start over again things changed around 2012 though i was now mature i was a very wizened 14 year old i was ready to conquer the kingdom of loathing <laughs> i made myself another account as even with this new level of determination, I was not ready to stop throwing away months of progress every single time I wanted to play. I chose a seal clubber this time because they were badass. For once, though, I stuck with this character, my friends. And after a few months, I had leveled my character all the way to 13, which I swear to you guys is more impressive than it seems. <laughs> <laughs> I killed the last boss of the game, the Naughty Sorceress. 
and became a hero. This is an actual image of the end boss. We did see her in the trailer. There she is in all her glory. Fear her for she has karma on her side, I guess. <laughs> and a staff of some description. She's kind of a beast. Yeah, she's naughty. She's a naughty, naughty, sorcer uh, naughty sorceress. Very naughty. So what should I do now, I thought. Now I have crushed the most difficult game I had access to. <laughs> Well, it has an end game, you see. Oh, really? <laughs> the main attra attraction is the ascension system. You can send your character to the afterlife to be reincarnated, which resets you back to level... Oh, God. We can actually... What's it called, this? Fuck, man. Prestige. We could prestige it. <sighs> you can send your character to the afterlife to be reincarnated. Reset you back to level one. Uh, to, to a character of your choosing while leaving your inventory intact and allow you to set certain restrictions on yourself for the next playthrough in order to gain better rewards when you finish. Players can do this to try out all the classes, challenge themselves to beat the game with different restrictions, try to speedrun the game for leaderboards, whatever the hell you wanted to do. So, I began prestiging and started playing through the game with every single class to experience everything the Kingdom of Loathing browser game had to offer. What an investment. Honestly, I'm kind of jealous. If you're going to pick something to go fully into, this is the one. This is where you do it. It's around this time that the drama finally comes to show its face. Kingdom of Loathing, like pretty much any multiplayer game, has a guild equivalent known as clans. Clan members get access to a chat room as well as a clubhouse. So you're telling me Kingdom of Loathing has player housing. Fuck. <laughs> the browser game has player housing. <laughs> well, how doesn't? But Kingdom of Loathing, that's got player housing. <laughs> the club members get access to a chat room as well as a clubhouse with several benefits like once per day special buffs. Jesus Christ. As an experienced player at this point, I of course had a clan. I'm not a scrub. There are only a few worth picking from due to the low player base of the game and its substantial cost in building a fully upgraded clubhouse. Every single time I made a new account from the first time in 2008 to 2014, six years you played this game, I joined the same clan. Okay, what's our guild name in Kingdom of Loathing, the stick figure game? What's our clan name, guys? <clears throat> what's it going to be? It's not the crawlers. We can't associate with that. The loathers, the loathers, the moldy towels. Oh, Bragart's blanket. Yeah, I like that, actually. Yeah, we'll go with the Bragart's blanket. That's perfect, yeah. Bragart's Blanket. <clears throat> I joined the same clan, Bragart's Blanket. May it engross us all. I wasn't coming back for friends I made in the clan or anything, since I didn't talk to them. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I just kept coming back for a combination of habits, and also I liked the name. Or maybe because we had reached one of the peak upgrades in the game. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the peak. It's the ball pit. <laughs> they have a ball pit. Yay. How glorious is that? They have a ball pit. Fantastic. <clears throat> they got the ball pit upgrade. Did you hear? Did you hear? Bragart's blanket got the ball, the ball pit. One clan activity which I'd never taken part in up until this point was dungeons. This is one of the very few real multiplayer experiences in this online multiplayer game. The clan could spend a large amount of meat in order to unlock a dungeon instance which is shared by everyone in the clan. Clan members could then go into the dungeon, spend adventures in the dungeon, exploring and fighting monsters, which would cause the clan as a whole to make progress through the dungeon over the course of a few days. Eventually, it would unlock boss fights and such. These boss fights had very valuable drops, including some of the best equipment and consumables. Crucially, though, only a single player could, f only a single player could fight each boss per lockout of the dungeon. As soon as one player engages a boss, nobody else in the clan could fight that boss until the fight was over. And as soon as the boss is dead, it is dead for everybody. You have to reset and reopen by paying another large sum of meat. Any equipment dropped by the boss goes to a clan officer-operated loot cache, where it can be distributed to anyone who participated in the dungeon to reach the boss. Any consumables, however, are given directly to the boss killer, 
As such, being the ones to kill the boss is very, very valuable. So there I was, grinding away as a disco bandit. I'd already finished the main story on this ascension, but I decided to hold off on resetting and prestiging my character just so I could mess around. I popped into my clan hall to grab some buffs when I noticed that one of the dungeons was in progress. In particular, it was a place called Hobo Polis, the city of hobos. This was a dungeon that required a pretty high level, at least 15 or so, meaning players who were mid-ascension were going to get annihilated if they walked in. For that reason, I had mostly ignored Hoboopolis, as I had been knocking out my ascensions, which reset my levels. This time, though, I was high enough level to go into Hoboopolis. Not strong enough to roll over everything in the dungeon, but enough to comfortably make some progress and see the sights. So, nobody else was in there. So I'll go in there. Hoboopolis has two phases. The sewers leading to the city and the city proper. The sewers are a mini dungeon that every clan member needs to get through independently to reach Hoboopolis main. With basically nothing of worth to be gained there. Think of it like the attunement that you need to do every single time you want to get into the raid. It took me about a day's worth of adventures to get it done, but I did. And so got to behold the majesty of Hoboopolis itself. Six zones, five of them themed after each of the game's elements, and each ending with a boss fight that drops equipment for one of the six classes in the game. The rest of the clan had already been pecking their way through bits of the dungeon. And so to my luck, almost all of the zones were cleared. Or half cleared when I got there. However, there was a single area that remained semi-intact. The Purple Light District. The Purple Light District was, as you probably guessed, the sleaze element zone of Hoboopolis. Populated with perverts, sex offenders, and bacon grease eaters, are lorded over by the boss Chester. <laughs> the big boss Chester. Despite not having much to any experience with Hoboopolis, I did know a little bit about this section of the dungeon. Namely, Chester was known to be the easiest of all the bosses in the dungeon, with him doing pretty average damage and having no real gimmicks to speak of. Easy enough, for example, for a not especially powerful character like mine to kill him. The gear he dropped was also the Disco Bandit items, which I was. Um, This is what Chester looks like. I believe that bag says he has cans. You are fighting Chester. <laughs> Chester is a stick man with glasses and a mustache. That's just a guy. That's Chester. He's the leader of Sleaze Town. He's the leader of Sleaze Town. <clears throat> Actual listeners may remember that I was, in fact, a disco bandit. This was practically destiny. I got so lucky. Slightly more astute listeners may also remember that gear is distributed by the clan officers and that killing the boss does not actually make any difference on whether or not you will get the items. But in my head, fuck it. I'm going to kill Chester. This would probably be a good time to discuss how Braggart's blanket works. <laughs> Chester has a surname, but I removed it because it was a bit offensive. Oh, okay. Oh, is it Chester the Mole? Would I be correct? Is it something like that in Sleaze? In Sleaze Land, I imagine it was something along those lines. Yes. Okay, we can guess what his surname was. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's a probably good time to discuss how Braggart's blanket handled boss killing of Hoboopolis. Progressing through a Hoboopolis zone requires killing 500 hobos in the zone, either through combat or special events. That then unlocks the boss fight for anyone to have a go at. Since killing bosses is the main goal of the dungeon, that means that killing hobos equals progressing the dungeon equals getting closer to killing bosses. Something to be rewarded by the clan. And so, it was decreed by Braggart's Blanket that the player who kills the most hobos in the zone is the one who gets to kill the boss. It was definitely worth competing for, since like I said before, the consumable items that a Hoboopolis boss drops sell for a lot of money in the in-game market, or could use yourself to get substantial gains. As for distributing the rest of the boss drops, players could request specific items, and officers would give them out based on, once again, how many hobos you had killed. So what would I get if I killed Chester? Only the most peak of peak food items, the extra greasy slider, 
This lubed up burger gave a massive amount of adventures if eaten. It gave a massive XP bonus. And it even increased the number of other stat booting, ice, stat boosting items you could use that day. To elaborate a little, you can only eat so many bits of food in a day in the game. So players are strongly incentivized to eat premium food. Pretty good. But commonly available food typically gives you like four adventures per, per, four adventures per fullness. These sliders, though, gave about six on top of their other benefits. And for all these reasons, they were worth 1.5 million meat on the market. I didn't even have 1.5 million meat after around one year of casually playing this game to give you some context. So you can see why I have been interested in getting my hands on this greasy, greasy burger. Uh, we have a picture of this most coveted item. It's the extra greasy slider. <laughs> this is a miniature hamburger of such surpassing greasiness that you can barely hold on to it. I gladly pay you Tuesday for it, though I'm not sure it'll last that long given the cholesterol content. Oh, it's amazing. What this meant was that I needed to kill me some hobos, baby. I checked the logs for the run to see what progress had already been made in the purple light district. To my dismay, I saw another player's name all over that place. Chromad. They had already killed around 350 hobos in my district. Using the superior math skills of a 14-year-old, I calculated that 500 minus 350 was less than 350. <laughs> There was actually no way of me killing more hobos than Chromad and laying claim to the sweet Chester kill. But all was not lost. I could still kill some hobos anyway. And then if no other disco bandit with more than 150 hobo kills wanted the drops from Chester, I could still walk away with some gear from this endeavor. So I got to work. I butchered my way through the purple light district. The streets were littered with porno mags and lube that day by the time I was done. Eventually, I was presented with the event that indicated that 500 hobos had been killed and that the fight with Chester was unlocked. Anyone could fight Chester now, me included. Nothing was stopping me from going balls to balls with Chester other than the rules of this clan. But I was a good lad with a kind heart. I wasn't the type of person to steal somebody else's boss kill. My kill count stood at about 150. My rivals, 350. That kill was rightfully Chromad's, and I wasn't going to stand in their way. Unless, of course, the clan rules allowed for it. I double-checked Bragart's Blanket's rules on fighting hobo bosses. And as I said before, the person with the most kills in the zone had the honor of killing the boss. Unless that player wasn't killing it fast enough. Now, Hobopolis didn't really have a time limit on it. A single instance remained open for as long as time allowed. That being said, the faster it gets done, the faster we can reset it and do another one. And so Braggart's blanket was incentivized to keep things moving so we could all get more loot. So to avoid a situation where a boss killer holds up the entire Hoboopolis run by not killing the boss, there was a clause where the boss killer only has exclusive access to a boss until the daily rollover. After rollover, the boss becomes free, free real estate. Anyone with at least 100 hobo kills in that zone can put up a message on the clan message board saying, hey, since boss killer isn't around, I'm going to do it. And if there's no complaints, then they're allowed. This effectively serves as a wake-up call for the assigned boss killer and ensures either they'll get to go and kill it or someone else will do it for them. At that time, I had wrapped up my rampage to the purple light district. It was only a few hours until the daily reset. So I thought about it. I mused over it. The nuance of this clause had been... tricky. I wasn't thinking this is obviously in place so that the clan isn't waiting for a full day on one person to do something. I was thinking... maybe I can just kill Chester. And so I burned through the rest of my adventure currency and logged off to wait until the rollover immediately after the rollover rollover came and rollover went i logged back on as soon as i could with a fresh tank of adventures and checked on chester chester's still alive chromad had yet to get their kill in hindsight of course they hadn't got the kill yet because it had been 10 minutes <laughs> since the new game day had started chromad had probably killed their 350 hobos using all of their currencies that previous day and then logged off 
content in the knowledge that at some point the next day, they would kill Chester themselves. Unless, of course, some 14-year-old tosser with a poor understanding of social etiquette were to step in. Literally, as the servers came back online after the reset, I put a message on the board saying that, hey, I'm killing Chester because Chromad isn't. <laughs> I then sat and waited for a response. Now, the rules didn't say how long I had to wait after I had put out the message before I could just go ahead. So it was unclear. It was vague. Perhaps a gray area. And so, it was probably up to me to decide how long I should wait. Well, two minutes had passed and nobody had replied. So I was satisfied that I had fulfilled all the parts of the agreement that had been put into the rules. So, Chester, here I come. I engaged her in combat and I emerged victorious. The spoils included Chester's bag of candy, a weapon for my disco bandit, which was sent to the clan loot for distribution. The real prize, though, my hard-earned spoils for defeating Chester, that sweet, sweet, greasy slider. Which I, of course, was just going to sell. <laughs> Eating it would give me mad XP gains for the day. Holding on to it would send my character swag skyrocketing. Suffice to say, I was a pretty happy bunny. That lasted about an hour, though. Because Chromad came online. About five minutes later, a resounding what the fuck appeared in the clan chat room. This was quickly followed by Chromad calling me out by name. Why have I stolen the boss kill? I hadn't considered what would happen after I killed the boss. I hadn't prepared for this moment. In my head at the time, I was thinking that I had followed the rules, Chromad. I don't see how you could be upset. My shield of moral superiority disintegrated before my eyes. And it actually dawned on me in my brain. I had just stolen this guy's boss kill. I panicked. I'm not good at conflict resolution. I still suck it. And so, I did the only thing I could and logged out. Bravely, I might add. This was an excellent solution in my 14-year-old mind. <laughs> What a solution. And an awful every other term solution. I don't remember how long I stayed logged out for, whether it was several hours or a few days. But of course, I wanted to play my favorite game, so I logged back in. My number one fear was logging back in to see the sight of Chromad in Clan Chat, because I knew it was not going to end well. Thankfully, it wasn't there. Someone who was there, however, was Ajna, one of the officers of Bragart's Blanket. Within two minutes of me logging in, I was faced with a private message. It was time to discuss, in his words, the Chromad situation. The discussion mostly consisted of Ajna pointing out that while I wasn't technically breaking any clan rules, I was loopholing my way into stealing the kill, and I was a dick. At this point, I had fully accepted the fact that I was a dick. I had been blinded by the honor of getting a boss kill and the siren call of those extra greasy sliders. In legitimate real-life tears at this point because they were going to kick me out of my clan in my favorite game of six years. You cried. You cried over Stickman game. You cried. In real life, you cried because you were getting shouted at because you were in trouble. <laughs> Aww. I remember being so hot of the stress of this situation and how sorry I genuinely felt. I offered to make things right by giving Chromad the burger I had illegitimately earned. In response, Ajna said that that wasn't good enough. It turns out I had actually done a pretty crap job of stealing the Chester kill. I was unaware of a new Hobopolis raider is that you could get way more than one burger from Chester if you use the correct item drop buffs and equipment. Actually quite a bit more than one. While I was satisfied with getting that single precious burger, a more experienced player like Chromad is used to getting three minimum. So not only did I steal one of those super valuable burgers from Chromad, I had effectively deleted at least two more of them from the game by being a fucking newbie. <laughs> 
In this light, Ash just said that to make things right, he had already given Cromad three replacement burgers that he had bought out of his own pocket. Why? I would then need to not only give Ashna my burger, <laughs> the burgers. Oh, Jesus Christ. The precious burgers. I would then need to not only give Ashna my burger that had caused this whole mess, but also give him the money value of another burger. I was stunned. Ashna was generous enough to help cover for my blunder, but even with that, the amount of money he was asking for was astronomically high. As I said earlier, those burgers go for about 1.5 mil. My account, after playing for all this time, only had 1.4 total. At the same time, I knew there was no room to argue. This was my fault. I was already being given a pretty amazing deal. So, through literal IRL tears, I sold all my stuff in my inventory to make the money and sent it all over to Ajna, along with those godforsaken burgers. He thanked me for working with him and also mentioned that I was actually getting Chester's bag of candy from the Hobopolis run. And to this day, I'm legitimately amazed that after accidentally ninja looting, I was actually given some loot for it. There must have been no other disco bandits on Rat Run or something. Full credit to Ashna. And would anybody else have just left? How many of you would have just left? Nah. <laughs> I don't think so. I'll just leave. Good luck in the future. Bye. Yeah, I mean, how many of you would have just left? Like, yeah, I screwed up. Sure enough. I'm not giving you everything I own. That's not happening. I'm sorry. I'll give you the burger back, but I'm not, like, breaking my account. I'm totally not breaking my account. I think he handled this situation about as well as he could have. He was not rude or hostile, just politely laying out the facts, how I screwed up and what the best way to fix it was. He even respected that I was a noob that didn't intend to cause this mess and cut me a lot of slack. That being said, this whole drama weighed on me for days. I knew Cromad was still angry at me. I don't think there was any feasible way I could have explained my thought process during the incident to them to not look like an asshole. I just felt guilty and I hated and poor. Realistically, I probably could have rebuilt any lost rep I had by acting normally for a while and rebuilt my money supply through minimal effort because I didn't even have a lot of money in the first place. At the time, though, these were insurmountable problems, and so I stopped playing the game. I would eventually return to Kingdoms of Loathing a couple of years later under yet another account, as was my style at the time. And of course, I rejoined Braggart's Blanket because that was my home. As was still there, as was Chromad. I didn't reveal who I was to either of them in fear of bringing back bad memories. And through this power of deceit, I ended up being friends with Chromad because he didn't know who I was. I stayed with Kingdom of Loathing right up until the time when I started playing World of Warcraft. But I once again silently drifted away from the game. At least this time, it was a less resounding negative reroll. <laughs> this ends the tale of I was definitely guilty and I don't need your help. This was the last time I played the almighty Kingdom of Loathing. I still keep an eye on it nowadays, mostly out of curiosity to see if it's still running. And it is running! The player count seems to be holding pretty steady around 300 concurrent, which I think is about the same as when I played over 10 years ago. It's free to play, so if anyone wants to check it out, go for it. For all I know, Braggart's Blanket could still be around, as the big clans of Kingdom of Loathing always seem unchanging and eternal. Maybe you could be the newest member. <laughs> could you get in? Have you joined, Raven? Oh my god. What? Oh, you got your pre-order stuff. You got the jacket. Okay. Oh, well, there we go. A final picture from our friend. The King of Loathing and Adventure is awaiting. This is definitely an ad. Well, do you guys want the burgers? Project MMO? No, not Project MMO. Oh my god, it's half past. I'm in so much trouble with my wife. So much trouble. Ladies and gents, I hope to see you over the weekend. If not Monday, we are stepping into Wing 2 of Guild Wars' is two first raid. Gonna be good. Gonna have a good time. And we should have some stuff out for the other weekend. All right. So be awesome, everybody. I have to go. Love you all. Bye, everybody.